All right, everybody, welcome to our first Let's Play of uh, Redcon. So, <clears throat> as you know, I finished my Sniper Elite 5 uh, playthrough, and I'm still working on Hitman, and I'm already wor in the middle of a uh, Final Path of Readings, but uh, there's really nothing but anything else to do, so I decided to go back on an old game I used to play back in the day. And I mean, I still play it today, to this day, but it's actually a really hard game known as Redcon, and this is a mobile game, by the way. I don't know if you guys can tell, but... So... <clears throat> Redcon as a mobile game has got to be probably one of the hardest ones I've ever played. Because the the AI in this game is so good, and... Just like the mechanics are really, like, uh, down to the second that Like, you have to be, like, really, really good. And just think out your strategies pretty good. And I, I like the, the... The whole idea about it. So... You're, pro you're probably wondering... So is this going to be like a full on let's play or is this just like uh, just some random off one video or something like that where you just show off the game. Now I'm planning on doing a full let's play of this one. Because why not? What better way to start the new year than a new playthrough? Am I right? I got, this probably this video is going to come out a little bit before New Year's because it's Friday over here. But uh, I figured why, why not? I, mean, I just couldn't wait. So let's see. Yes. Okay. Hold up. There we go. I see, I, I don't know. It, it, it like brought me into the first mission, but I needed to use my cloud so I don't start off at level zero because I want to show off some more stuff. So it's just gonna. Give you guys a quick overview of what the intro is. There's no cutscenes. I mean, like this. There's not like I think like two cutscenes, and it's like this, but it's not really full-on cutscenes. Basically, World War Two never ended, and uh, there's only like two countries now, or something like that. That's all you really need to know about. I also like the backgrounds. The backgrounds are amazing. All right, so we gotta take out somebody, uh, rebel faction. So, right off the bat, uh, you see all those medals I got on the on the right side? Yeah, that's the the whole reason I wanted to keep my progress. I didn't want to like erase everything, because I want to show off everything here that I have so far. So first off, right here, oh, well, I, that's my badge. So basically, this game starts off. It's like a, there's a demo version of the game, so if you want to try it out, you can. But if you own the game you get this one on the right or i obviously own it yeah so i need to do that score zero don't worry about that right now that's basically how much score you have in total to level up no no sorry score is actually the for like leaderboards the xp is at the top right that's because they had moved it i forgot about that it used to be a little bit different experience it actually tells you at the bottom too so if you don't want to look at the top right you can look right under the score and all these medals, you're not going to have any at first, but as you progress through the campaign, you'll get them. And there's different medals for all sorts of stuff, you know. There's It's like achievements, basically. And it, every time you're about to start a battle, they'll show up right here. Bro, as you can see, I'm trying to give a quick overview of the layout here, because there's actually not that much right now that you can really do. All you... This is going to be very important later on in the game, but right now, it's not going to let you edit anything. This is just to view what your setup you got. And, let's see. Yeah, and then you got your resources at the bottom. Now, your resources aren't important right now, but you want to keep an eye on them later on in the game. And you want to get used to that because it's very important. But right now, they don't really do nothing. They're just there because they really have to be there to make the game work, you know, but... So, let's see, I'm trying to see if there's anything I should talk about. No. Okay, so this gun right here is actually different than the other ones. I'll get over that. I'm going to go over all the all the weapons in the game right now. I mean, not right now, but at the beginning of the battle. And at the beginning of each battle, when there's a new weapon, I'll go over that as well. So, there's nothing else. Yeah, so this, uh, 
three like, if you tap the three lines, it goes into the pause menu, but hold up. Since I did that, I didn't see my progress. There we go. And yeah, that's out. So let's go into battle. Alright. Alright, so first things first. You tap the middle of the screen to pause like this. If you want to fast forward it, slide your finger to the right like that. If you want to make it back to normal speed, slide it to the left. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to teach you guys how to play. And I'm going to go over the best strategies and whatnot because this game is uh, can get pretty hard. So, to the gun will automatically have a target selected by default. You can change that by selecting a different room like this. Now you see that there's a 70% chance right there. There is RNG in this game, so that tells you the percentage chance of that bullet hitting there. So as you can see over here, 70. Over here, it's also 70. It's around the same, but it'll matter more later on. And going over the HUD real quick, you'll see that green health bar right next to the on the bottom left, right next to the three dots or three lines. My bad. The green health bar is your health for your fortress. You don't have a fortress yet, so that's not really a problem right now. If you the way you lose it right here is if all your guns get destroyed and if all your soldiers die that's literally it but later on the green health bar is actually important blue health bar not the blue health bar the blue line is going to be your power because uh, that's what you're going to be using to power up all the rooms later on because you're going to need generators and whatnot the red orange line right you see right there that's going to be your ammo that's not important right now, but later on it will be. It's actually very essential. I think, honestly, the w the one bar that I've noticed I've used the most is the ammunitions bar. Because that one is like so uh, strict on how much it gives you that you really have to keep an eye on it. But uh, as you can see, the bar on the enemy, he doesn't have any ammunitions because he has no weapons. He And he really, really doesn't. like. It's just like uh, two rooms that really do nothing. So don't worry about this right now. It's just teaching you how to shoot and whatnot. So, to select the target, first we need to select a gun. Let's choose this one. We don't want to attack that one, so let's go to this one. Now, you notice uh, some more options to put on the top left. I'm going to quickly go over them. This turns off the gun. And you're probably wondering, why would you want to turn off your gun? And as you can see, if you paid attention to the blue bar, our power, it gives us more energy. Because, you know, energy is very essential. If you're running out of energy, certain rooms will start powering off. And certain rooms that are more advanced will use more energy than others. So you want to keep that in mind. So let me turn it back on. You see how it went down? And if I turn it off, another thing you'll notice is that ammunition went up because that gun is no longer using ammo. This only applies to weapons, by the way, weapon rooms. If you turn off like a, like a med bay, for example, it's not going to give you any more ammo. That's just, it'll only give you your electricity back. Well, let's turn that back on. So, second option here. Hold fire. This is by far the most important option that you're going to need in this game. You need to learn how to use the hold fire option. Early on, you're not going to really need it. You can win the game easily like this. But, uh, the game will get so hard, you really, like, have to depend on this option. So, what it does, I'm going to show you real quick. Let me hold fire on everything else. So, I'm going to have this thing set to attack this. It'll attack automatically, by the way. So, as you... You see that like white circle filling up in the and all three of the guns. That's the time it's to it, it's uh, taking to shoot because it's loading the gun. I guess you could say. But uh, certain guns charge faster and others don't. This one is the fastest gun, but I we'll go over that later. So you see that it's slowly filling up. I'm gonna show you guys what happens when it when it fills up. It's gonna shoot. You'll see, except for the t two left ones. So you see how the middle one just went into green that that's because we have it in hold fire mode it's not going to shoot unless we tell it to so like if i go over that real quick you see there's a button on the top right that red icon that means that that's the button to shoot manually so this will not be here if you get rid of the hold fire button now the uh, this one right here is not going to have that button this one is obviously this one what it'll do is it'll shoot automatically as soon as it loads so let's see what happens so you see it shot automatically to that target just like that now like I said, you want to use the hold fire option later on in the game as much as possible. You're like, you're going to need it. It's like a crutch. But uh, right now, you really don't need to. But you should definitely get used to doing that. Otherwise, things are going to get really tough really quick later on. Now, let's see. Other options. 
So these two other options are the fire modes. That's what I like to call them. Because the first two options are really just a utility so you can do. Every gun has these the first two, but the ones after the hold fire, that's up to what gun you're using. So the first fire option we have is the double shot. So what the double shot does, it's pretty explanatory. It shoots twice. However, because of that, what it also does is when you go into double shot, it uh, uses up first off more ammo. Well, in this case, I guess it doesn't. This is tutorial, but it, it actually uses more ammo. It takes longer to shoot, I mean to reload. And as you can see, it actually brought down our percentage to hit down to 60 from 70. Like you see. It's kind of useful, but honestly not that amazing. But I, I can see it being used here and there. I've never really like, like gone out of my way to actually want to use it. Because this gun in particular is a weak gun. And it's all about just hitting quick and precise. And like uh, not really precise shots, but like just quick shots that will more or less hit. And the last option we have here is the flashbang. So what the flashbang does, I'm going to show it off real quick. It actually doesn't bring down our percentage down, but it does in certain cases, depending on the gun. But in this one, it doesn't. It doesn't, it takes a little bit longer, as you can see, to load right there. It's taking quite a while, but what it does, you'll see what it does. Boom, he's flashbanged. So what that did, it didn't damage the target, but instead what it did, it stunned everybody, every personnel that's in it. And so what that does... I'm going to get rid of the hold fire just to show you guys. It just allows everybody just to hit these guys. And these guys can't move. The ones that are stunned. And I would say that doesn't last forever. But it does last for a bit. And you see I flash bang them again. So he really can't do nothing. Alright. So before I go into any further. I need to explain the other mechanic here. That before things get a little bit more complicated. Now's a good chance to introduce him. But we have soldiers. So... You'll notice that some of these rooms have soldiers in them. I have two on my on my side and they have, uh, I think, three by the looks of it. So, the way you select a soldier is you double tap the room that has the soldier in it, like right here. And you see that selected the soldier. Now, you can also, I believe... Yeah, you can do this, but I don't really do that. If you if you really wanted to select uh, multiple, because uh, really what, what, you, what you could just do is just like uh, do this. Okay. You can just pause the game and do it manually. I mean, I guess it's quicker if you do it like in real time, but I mean, it's not reliable because you're in the middle of a battle. So you want to get used to pausing the game. Uh, so basically, these guys have health bars. So if they die, they stay dead. You don't get any more soldiers. So these guys, what you have is what you get. You don't get any more of them. If they die in a mission, I mean, you'll get them in the next mission. Like they'll be, they'll all be back. But if they die in the middle of a mission, there's no like facility or anything like that that gives you another soldier for the rest of the battle. You're, you, you're stuck with what you got, you know? So you really, really have to be careful with these guys. Especially with uh, certain uh, bullet rounds that is introduced later on. But what do these guys do, you're probably asking. So they do two things. Number one, as you can see on the right side, those guys are repairing the damaged building. Because if the building gets destroyed, then what it does is... Well, it does one thing that I can't really go into right now without showing you guys later on in the game. But the... Uh, one thing, it, uh, the other thing that I can say is that when a building gets destroyed, it brings out the health bar. If the health down goes to zero, you ought, that person automatically loses, no matter what. But, uh, yeah. So these guys will go around repairing rooms that they're in. You can order them around, like, uh, let me bring this guy to the right side. And you see moved here. The other purpose they serve is to improve the weapons by uh, manually operating them, because the weapons are in autom- This weapon is in automatic mode, and this dude is enhancing the weapon. And what the- what they do is when they enhance the weapon, they decrease the cooldown time between shots. They improve the hit chance. As you can see, this one is 70, right? Well, now that the, these two guys are in it, now you can see it's up to 80. So it definitely helps. It boo It doesn't boost the damage. It only boos boosts the accuracy and the cooldown timer. So that's really, really good. But I think that's about all I can really discuss here. So let's uh finish up right here. So... Let's try to destroy this radar here. You can see that guy's almost dead. And that shot missed, by the way. You can see. Okay, that guy's dead. So they only got two soldiers left. And, you'll, and you're probably wondering, how do I recover health here for my soldiers? If a soldier gets injured, the only way to recover health is through a med bay. 
Otherwise, if you get damaged at all and you don't have a meta bay, that soldier is stuck with that health. So you really have to be careful. Really tactical stuff. Okay, so that's all of them. Gonna switch the targets. So as you can see, you can change their targets in real time like this. But uh, that's not really good, especially later on. So what you want to do is pause the game and then switch the targets. Gives you plenty of time to think. Okay, that dude's definitely good. And I'm gonna get rid of the flashbang. No need for it now that they're all dead. Because flashbang doesn't do damage, it just stuns targets, like I've explained. And once that target is gone, I will win. Yep. Now you can see here we got some score. Good for leaderboards. Do doesn't really matter right now. If you're just going for a regular run and you're first time playing, don't worry about that. Experience, that's what you want. Rooms destroyed, soldiers killed, that sort of stuff. The more soldiers you kill, the more XP you get. So we have 185, so that's really good. Alright, so new... Same setup here, but this time, we have a new room. It's a radar system, and I'm gonna explain what the top three guns do. Because uh, I only went over like the functionalities of each gun, but I'm gonna explain the, what these guns actually are right here, as well as that radar system. Alright, so we actually get, got three things to talk about here. I'm gonna go over it, yeah, gotcha. So, let's talk about the Ballistic Cannon. The Ballistic Cannon is uh, the first weapon in the game you get. It is very fast, it's semi-accurate, but kind of reliable though. Because it, you can, basically what you can do with this thing is you shoot quick and... Like, you have a decent amount of chance of hitting them, so you can shoot quick and keep on shooting and shooting and shooting, you know? And you see how we have it in bulks, right? Well, you can technically get rid of targets like that, but that's not the way people use them. See, the way people use these guns is they'll have better guns, but they'll only have one of these ones. So basically what they do is they're like a distraction because you can keep shooting and shooting, you know? And what I have seen is people sometimes switch to either double shot or regular shot. You can just use this to just kind of like uh, suppress the enemy and keep, have them like fixated on fixing a certain location, you know? Like a, like a reactor, for example. If there's a reactor, they're going to prioritize that over guns because reactors are important. That's a resource. So you can just have that, like, a, attack that while your other guns just completely mow down other locations, you know? That's where the main use for these things are. Now, other than that, they're not really, like, uh, like amazing or anything. If you're a new player, you're probably going to be using these for a little bit. But as an experienced player, I'm, I'm not going to be using these that much at all. Like, I really ain't. Once I get my... Uh, my loadout customization available i'm gonna be switching these to something else if i can but uh, you'll notice actually there's a there's like a silver symbol right next to the middle one and that's actually the rank of it you see how it says ballistic cannon mark 2 compared to the other ones the other ones say the ballistic cannon this is a better version of the ballistic cannon right now you don't really have to worry about it but i'm gonna try to explain it so basically there's three three different types of weapons there's mark one which in this case doesn't have a label. It's just the gun name. There's Mark II. It's going to have the name. And then there's Mark III. Mark III is going to have a gold circle around it. Basically what this does. It means it's a better version of the said gun. And the game doesn't really tell you this. But I'm basically going to go over what it does. Basically what the upgrades do. Is just give you slightly better reload times. And like 5% I think it's like 5% because it doesn't really tell you but I've noticed it's like 5% accuracy over the the base versions and that's all it does it doesn't do any more damage it just get like more cooling times and better accuracy that's really all it does <clears throat> all right so let's talk about the enemy weapons here because it's a new weapon the tele siege mortar so this thing is a uh, kind of annoying to deal with it's actually pretty useful, but I kind of like it, but I also don't like it. See, it's uh, not exactly reliable, but if you're lucky, it's very annoying to whoever's having to deal with it. Because this thing is an RNG, like, reliant uh, weapon. And what do, I, what do I mean by that? So, basically what I mean by that is that this gun has, like, a low accuracy to hit. Like, I'm talking about the 60s. And that's the base, like no uh, no weapon modifications or anything like that, you know, that will decrease it anymore. So on its own, it shoots like 65, 
it's around there but if you have a soldier on it it actually bumps it up to 70 but that's still not pretty good though because uh you know it can miss a lot so the thing with these things is that they shoot up and they can land from above you know and hit you like it, it, it basically does more damage than these things but the one redeeming thing they have these things have that these things don't is they have shredder rounds and what shredder rounds do is they're made specifically to take out your guys and that's very annoying because of this because what you can do is just like one combo that you can do is just have these things with flashbangs to stun the target and this have like a couple of these things on shredder rounds to just snipe all your guys out like one by one and then like when there's nobody left just take out all the rooms without any repairs and that's a pretty good tactic that the AI will use to get rid of you. In this case, they're not going to use it. Because as you can see, their ammo is garbage. So they're not going to be doing that. Alright, so I think that's it. So we have a, a soldier in each room. So that's pretty good. We don't have to worry about moving anybody around this time. We do have one more room to talk about though. The ballistic radar. So what this thing does... It's a utility room, and what that means is that it doesn't shoot. Instead, it serves a, a purpose, you know? And in this case, what the radar does is as soon as the one of the guns shoot, it's going to tell us which room they were targeting. So it gives us a chance to get anybody that, that's in a room out of there, you know? So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. It's same for these. And as you can see, there, there's no target or anything. The only thing you can do with this is turn it on and off. Oop, oop. Yeah. Now, you'll notice one thing. I just want to point out really quickly. You want to keep an eye on this. You see how the arrow cooldown timers are white and theirs is yellow? The reason for that is because when you start running out of ammunition, you see how there you see how ours is like uh you see that yellow bar that's on the red bar? The yellow bar is our leftover ammunition. You want to see yellow. If your yellow runs out, it starts going into orange which means that you're basically running out of ammo and what happens when you run out of ammo is that first off your bar goes from white to yellow and when that happens basically the cooldown gets slower and slower depending on how bad your ammo situation is so you're gonna be able you're not gonna be shooting as much and that's annoying you know that's the problem because you, uh you're at a disadvantage there now if you see you see how he has is only red if the red runs out and goes into black then the yellow goes from yellow to red, and then it gets even slower. Like you're not gonna be seeing any shots fired for a solid like, co like a solid minute or something like that. It's like really, really slow. So you always keep an eye on your ammo. So, all right. So yeah, I'm gonna show, try to show you guys how the radar works real quick. It works automatically. So you see how we shot. Notice how my room, this room right here, is red. Let's move you out of there. Boom. Oh, well, he actually destroyed that. So when they destroy a room, what happens is that you can't shoot or do anything with it. You have to repair it or build it back up. And the way you... It takes a while to build a room than it does to repair one. So, it so it's good. I need uh, two guys here instead of one guy. Depending on how big the room is, uh, it's going to be a bit... Okay. Let's go to this one. You see how those shots are missing a lot? They hit hard, but they can miss a lot. You see? We had like some bad luck right there at the beginning. Normally that doesn't happen. Ah, we got flash banged. That's okay, we got hit. Gotta take out that mortar quickly. Okay, that thing's down. Quickly switch. You see, you don't want to be switching targets in the middle of a battle. You want to pause it first. Oh, he did pop shred around. So, okay. You see how my health just went from like high health to like one HP? That's what you got to watch out for. All right. So, because I don't have a med, med bait, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out these two guys with these guys. Just switch the roles. He's going for that one now. Okay, they're they're all dead now. We did it. Actually, I was not expecting them to destroy the first room because normally those things have terrible accuracy. 
Okay, we got some more XP. That's nice. What happened, what you do with the XP is, well, you use XP to level up. Does it automatically. And when you level up, you unlock new gear, like weapons, weapon types, and new facilities. Which is pretty useful. Okay, so now we gotta deal with the MPs. Okay, so we're actually moving to a different type of base. No guns. But you're probably wondering, no guns? How are we gonna take them out then? You'll see. So... There's actually three ways to win a battle here. I'm going to go over it real quickly. Yeah, so. I'm going to go over the, the three victory types. The first victory type is destroy everything with your guns. That's pretty easy to do, you know? Pretty standard. The second one is infiltration. That's where you send in people to invade their fort and you kill every one of them. If you do that, you win. The third one is the health bar. If... If their health bar runs out, you win. But that takes a bit, you know? So, let's see. I'm trying to see what we can go over. Okay, so yeah, let's go over this room. The blast engine. This is your, where you're, getting, you're gonna get your electricity from. Your energy. You need this room. If you have this room here, it'll give you power. If you don't, you're go you gotta watch out your power. And these rooms stack, so if you have two blast engine rooms, then you get even more power. But in this case, we only have one. Nothing really, like, uh, to write home about, just, like, a very necessary resource, so... Oh, crap, let me do that. So you'll notice that there's a dude already there, and he's working on it. So what it does, it gives us more power than without it, so let me show you. I'm gonna move him out. You see how it dropped down? Our power just would drop down by a little bit, so let's move him back there. And you see, we get more power from it. So... Next room, the armory. What this does, if you have this room, doesn't you don't have to mess with it. So it's an automatic room. You just equip it, and it does its purpose at the beginning of the battle. What it does is it actually gives you, it gives every infantry assault machine guns and body armor, so they'll have extra health. And instead of having pistols, now they're gonna have SMGs, which is really useful. And you're gonna, and that is essential for defending against invasions and invading in general. If you don't have this room and you're trying to invade, it's not gonna work. You're gonna pretty much fail. So you're gonna, if you're planning on doing invasions, you're gonna need this room. Basically, it's it's a must-have. Now you'll actually notice at the bottom right there, it actually tells you the HP of each room, the green one, and it tells you how much power it, it's gonna use up. So pretty useful. And right here, the blast in it. Blast engine. It tells it tells you uh, how much uh, energy it's outputting. So plus six, but it takes up three ammunition. Here's the med bay. If a soldier is injured, you send him here. Automatically gets healed. No time. Further upgrades of this room increase the healing speed. So that's really useful. And here's how we're going to be invading the fleet command. This calls in an airship. We all go in there, invade him, and that's it. Now, it actually has two different types of modes, but we can't use it. And that's the EMP mode. It's where it calls it an, air, an airship, and it drops an EMP on them. We don't have that option yet, but we will soon. And, uh, last thing. The Orion EMP Blaster. So, this thing is a weapon that, uh, doesn't actually damage your facility directly. I'm trying to explain this in a weird way, but, uh... It doesn't hurt your guys, but it also doesn't hurt the buildings. What it does is uh, it has a certain amount of chance of just turning off your power. So, like, it'll do this, and you can't do anything about it until the timer wears off. So, you gotta keep in, mi keep in mind. Alright, so... Let's see. Yeah, so we'll just wait like this. While the fleet command charges up. You see on the top right, it's charging up slowly. If you have a dude on it, it charges quicker. <laughs> So you see that he's going to fire his EMP. Uh, okay, so he went for the med bay. So as you can see, he hit it, but nothing happened. That's good. If he hits it again... I see. Yeah, so you see how there's like a blue glow residue left over from that EMP blast? It's kind of hard to see because of the med bay, but there's like a dark bluish glow. So, since it didn't turn off my power, what it does is if he shoots it again and that glow is still there, it gives him, uh, increases his chance to turn off my power and cause an EMP blackout there. 
that's basically all it does. Okay, so the imp so my error ship is ready. I can call it in by tipping the top right. Let's call that in. So the way we, we board it, let's board these two guys in. Tap in these guys. And just tap the airship and they'll board it automatically. Same with this guy. Sure, we'll call in this guy. Yeah. You see that the, there are four dots there? That's the max capacity for airships. That's not upgradable at all. That's how it always is. So to move it, tap the airship. And then tap the room. And he goes there. If you have a dude stationed right here at the fleet command, it moves faster. Which we do. Otherwise, it would move slower. Alright, let's hope he doesn't EMP my airship. Okay, he missed. That's good. So, you see they're invading? You see they're just mo- They just killed everyone easily because they have uh, SMGs. Alright. That's taken out. Oop, let me do that. I didn't have, you see, I didn't have to do anything else. I just killed everybody, not one. That's because uh, I got the invasion victory. Pretty cool. Let's see. Leveled up. Now we're level one. Doesn't really give us anything here, but uh, later on we'll get weapons. Okay, so, let's see, what are we working with here? Yeah, it's teaching us about the alternate fire modes. I already went over that, so don't worry about it. So we got mortars, and we only have one ballistic cannon. That's all right. We have the radar, useful. We don't have a med bay, which, you know. But we do have an active defense control, and I'll go over that just uh, in a bit here, but I want to go over their weapons first. So, they have Python missiles, and... Talpan toxin missiles. So missiles, the way they work, they take a little bit of time to charge up, and you have to met you can you have to manually fire them. But there is an option later on to disable that. But for now, you have to manually fire them. And basically, you fire them to a target. They're kind of slow because they're like missiles, you know. But they're kind of slow. When they hit their target, they hits pretty hard. And uh. Pretty, it's pretty useful and they don't miss by the way these actually do not miss you cannot miss with these they're guided missiles so what do you do how do you deal with heavy hitting missiles that always hit that's where our defense control comes in so you notice that there are like two guns right there perched up top i can't uh, interact with them at all they shoot on their own so what these things do they will shoot at anything that tries to cross it's a uh, FOV, I guess you could say, which would be like uh, the beginning of my my side of the screen. They, they, they'll shoot it down and uh, they can shoot at bullets, but it's not it's not really going to do anything. These things are too slow. There is a better version of it that actually can accurately shoot down regular bullets, but this one is only meant for the missiles. So as soon as the missile gets here, it's going to shoot it down. So that's how you deal with it. So they got a mortar. This is an even slower version of these missiles because this one, what it does, it poisons everybody in the room. So, basically, you can't be in the room when this thing hits it. Alright, so they have two munitions depot. So, this is how you get your ammo. I showed you guys the blast, en blast engine, and that's how you get the power. This, right here, is how you get the ammunition. He's got two of them, and... You'll notice that he has two of them, and his bar's still kind of, like, not filled up that much. Compared to me, who doesn't have one, and I only have three guns. And you're probably wondering, what's the deal with that? And you're probably thinking that for you probably think it's the game being easy on you, you know, just giving you a little advantage. Uh, no, the reason why is because these things are bullet hungry. Like these things eat up a lot of your ammunition. So let me go over that real quick. So you remember how I showed you guys uh, how to check on your health and power? So you notice that my cannon, it actually takes four bullets. My mortar takes eight. Yeah. And that red one, by the way, is how much damage it deals. So these things hit hard. The missile takes 11 each, except for the toxin one. The toxin one takes 15. Yeah, so you can see why. These things are like, 
They're pretty good and they're pretty fun to play around with, but they take a lot of resources. All right, but I think that's about it. So what do I want to do first? Well, first off, I want to take out the mortar because the mortar is going to be a pain. Because that's the one thing my defense... Out of all the weapons he's got, that's the one thing my defense will not be able to shoot down. So let's take that out. I'm going to equip flashbang on this, actually. We're just going to take that thing out regular style. Okay, they're going to go repair it. Thank you, he missed. Okay, yeah, that's probably see how they he basically launched them in bulks. So I gotta really really be careful here. Hopefully he doesn't hit. Yes. So you see how they're shooting down the missiles? Now when you have a I forgot to mention this, when you have a dude stationed on the active control, what it does, it makes your thing more accurate and it shoots more bullets. So you know you get it has a better chance of that. Oh thank you. All the missiles were destroyed. Alright, so let's get rid of these one. Actually, no, let's get rid of the green one. That green one's going to be more annoying. Alright. Almost down. Are you flashbang him? Yes. Thank you. He's dead. Alright, let's switch over to this one now. Okay, you'll notice something now. You see how there's a green, uh, that's gas. That's like a green cloud right there because that's gas, obviously. So, since we did, so I need to explain something real quick. Certain guns that have special properties in them, like toxin or napalm, if they get destroyed, they leave behind that, that said effect. So, like, he, he had a uh, toxin missiles. Since we destroyed him, it leaves a green cl gas cloud. And what gas clouds do, if anybody goes in there, they take damage over time. These things don't last forever. They're just there for a little bit. But it prevents them from doing their job of fixing and building, you know? These, since you don't have anything... These don't have any properties with them. When we destroy it, it's just going to destroy. That's it. I get that mortar back up. So you see that gas cloud is gone now already? Alright, switch it up. Gotta get rid of that mortar. So then I gotta repair it. Ah, oh, quit missing. Thank you. Right, I'm gonna take off the flashbang. I don't really need it now. So you see that part with the mortars? They hit pretty hard, but they miss a lot. Okay, we destroyed all that. And you see how his health bar is basically zero? I think he's uh, he lost. Let me see. Yep, he lost. There you go. And that's the one for us. So we just got introduced to the enemy of this game. Get used to see him, seeing him a lot. And let's see here. Ah, uh, yeah. So we already get introduced. That's how hard this game is. We already have to deal with a super weapon. Yeah, so if we destroy the power supply. Let's see here. Okay, so I got, got a couple things to explain here. Same setup, but the enemy setup is obviously different. So, first things first, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The super weapon. Super weapons in this game are pretty powerful. But because of that, 
they take up a lot of resources to run. In this case, his his gun takes up a a big chunk of ammo and a decent, a pretty large amount of power, which is you know big. But the another thing that they do, super weapons are not the size of one room. They're actually the size of two, sometimes three, sometimes four, even you know, like they're pretty big. In his case, it's only two. But uh, to compensate for that, they hit really hard and have a lot of uh cool features on them like they can fire like shredder rounds they can fire napalm rounds they can do a lot of stuff but uh in his case i think all, all this one can do i think it it can shoot regular rounds toxin rounds and napalm rounds and i think that's about it i know actually i think it can also flashbang that's like a lot of stuff yeah the typhoon is very very good it does heat up a couple power and rounds though but it's actually pretty powerful so you notice he has a blast engine, an armory, and a munitions depot. He can't do nothing with the armory since he's not getting invaded. But it does have another feature, which I, I'm i going to save that for another video. So first thing we should do, get rid of the power. Because he has, uh, his uh, energy is on blue. Whereas his uh, munition is on like bad. But we can get rid of the power and he won't even be able to shoot at all. So let's do that. Let's speed it up just a little bit. You notice as soon as I hit him, the soldier that was working it could no longer operate it properly to boost it, so now he lost power to two rooms. And now his ammo's ammunition is on red since he has no ammo. Alright, flashbang. I can't have them dealing with that. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You see what that super weapon did? Just instantly destroyed my room. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, get out, get out, get out, get out. Jeez. Ooh, that thing hit hard. Come on, so close to this planet. Yes, I lost power. Alright, so now we can uh, begin destroying the actual super weapon. There we go, just continue to flashbang anybody there. Okay, flashbang that dude, just to delay it. Ah, double miss, come on. Yes. Jeez, what are these shots? Okay, we won. Whew. He took too much damage. Yeah, his mission can be pretty tough for if, if you don't know how to play the game, it can actually be pretty tough because that th you're probably going to be like, how does that thing one-shotting me? Yeah, super weapons will do that. And if you think that's pretty busted, oh man, super weapon, that's not even the, the half of it. Wait until you get to the, like, the end of the game when you meet like the biggest super weapon. Trust me, destroying one room, it's not as broken as you think it is, like instantly. All right. Alright, so, got a different setup, but now we only have two mortars and two, two cannons, one munitions depot and one radar. Yeah, so you get, that's basically explaining that you get more XP by killing the soldiers, so... 
I'm gonna put him right here, actually, so we can get better ammo. They have terrible munitions. Alright, I already destroyed that. Gotta destroy this thing, though. This thing is gonna hit hard. If it hits. But I don't want it to. Alright, that thing's gone. Uh... Alright, gotta start repairing stuff here. Okay, that thing's gone. Let's focus on this one. Okay, you also hit that. Okay, one more gun. Let's go. You got this. There we go. Let me get rid of that soldier there. Okay, he's gone. Okay, just one more left. And we'll win. There we go. Oh, uh, he's almost dead. Yep, we got him. And we leveled up. So now you see we have that we unlocked the Hydra Assault Cannon and the Tele Siege Mortar. Don't worry about that right now. Okay, I think I'm up for one more mission. At least until the- I just want to get the tutorial knocked out of the way. Before we actually begin the main game, where it just like, leaves you on your own. Um... Okay, so same setup. They have a radar. Actually, they actually have one gun we don't have. This one right here. The Hydra Assault ca Cannon. This is the one we unlocked. They actually have a Mark II version though. But, let me explain how this gun works. It's a way better version of the ballistic cannon, but what it does, it takes a little bit longer to charge up, but it shoots three bullets at once. It goes, pow, pow, pow. and it is pretty good. It's actually fairly accurate, just like the regular ballistic cannon. Now it has a an alternate mode called the nine shot fire rounds, where basically what it does instead of shooting three rounds, it shoots nine, but it, it takes up more ammunition, like a lot of it, you know, and it decreases its accuracy, obviously. But it's actually pretty good if you want to gamble, you know? So first things we're going to be doing is immediately get rid of this thing. This thing's going to be a pain. I'm going to move this soldier right here. Move you right here so we can get more ammo in case we need it. Although I don't know if we're going to be switching for this one. Yeah, I'm, for, the first thing you want to do is just going to take out this thing because you don't even want to give that a chance to hit. Alright, next thing we're going to take out the mortars. I hey, tried flashbanging me, but I moved already. Okay, that one's gone. Next. Okay, flashbang. That one's gone, so I'm trying to take out this one. Now, he's almost done repairing this one, so we're going to be quick about this. Okay, you got it. We took it at just in time too because he's almost got that one repaired. Come on, don't let it. I ah, shot. So you see right here, it shot a bunch of times. You see, it shot like three times. Okay, it's gone though. And we just gotta take out the radar. Kill that dude. And that's gone. Oh, we just gotta take up these guys. 
Okay, that's gone. This gun is back up, though, so we gotta take it out. And that's the last dude there. And he's dead. And just like that, we won and killed everyone. Pretty simple. And we got a perk. We get two ammunition now, which is really useful. We have to equip it first. We unlock the fortress. Fort Raptor. We leveled up again, but now we got the blast engine, active defense control, and authentication defense turret. Oh, auto cannon defense turret, sorry. Yeah, so the whole time we were in the safe sector, now we're going to the front lines. Alright, so, I think this is where I'm going to leave it, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build the fort so we can get it set up for our next episode, which will be Monday, because uh, weekend, New Year shit, you know? But uh, I just want to get this thing set up so I can show you guys the ins and outs real quick. So, you got to click on Customize, and you see like a bunch of icons right here on the left side. The crossing swords are where your weapons go. The shield is where your defense goes, and the gears are where your utility rooms go. So, right here, your weapons that you have available. You see how it says play 0 out of 4? I can only have 4 of these right now. I can only have 2 Hydra right now, and I can only have 2 Mortars right now. And these are my utilities. My defenses. You can't have the defenses without the without this thing, by the way. So you need this if you plan on defending. Here are the layouts. Now, if you own the game, you actually get access to the to multiple versions of it, which I will be using. And I mean, like, you do, if you're playing the demo, I think you get like access to like five more chapters, but you only get access to the base version of this. Uh, let's try using. I, I usually like to go for this one, the uh, extra defense and power layout, because you don't have to worry about power that much, and you actually get an extra defense slot. So let's go with that. So, I like to put the blast engine at the bottom, because that's the safest location, usually. I, I like to put the... The... Def I think... Yeah, let's try this. Defense right here. Med bay. And as for the defenses, let's put this one right here. I only have one slot right... I mean, one one of those things right now. But later on, I'll unlock another one. Um. So, what do I want to run here? I could probably run the two of these actually. And two mortars. Hold on, I'm just looking real quick, guys. Uh Oh, I don't have a munitions depot. You see right there at the bottom that now it's minus six. I'm losing six ammo. That's when my ammo's on orange, so. Can we do this? Uh. No. Let's try this. There we go. Oh, wait, no. God. Okay, now we're good. Yeah, dude, that, that mortar just eats up all the rounds. But luckily, we have a perk that will give us a little bit more. Uh, where is it? There we go. Now we get plus two, so that we're at least good for right now. And you just click done, and boom. That's your fort built. Pretty simple. Uh, for beginners, if you have the game, I just like to go for the extra... It's either this one. Hold up. Usually, I like to go for either the extra defense and power layout or the extra manpower and cover layout. Because what these does, I need to explain what these do. 
the extra weapon and, and concrete layout, what it does, it actually gives you an extra weapon slot on your building, and it gives you better cover at the bottom. So like, it's harder to hit the rooms at the bottom. So it's actually pretty good, but it's not beginner friendly. This one right here, the extra defense and power layout, is more friendly because you don't have to worry about power that much, and it gives you another, well, defense slot. The extra manpower and cover layout, what it does, it gives you one extra room, one extra soldier, and better cover at the top. But only a certain part of the top, not the whole top. So it's alright, but because of that, you actually get one less weapon, usually in most cases. But I like to go with the third one. Third one and fourth one are both really good. I'd go with the third one if you're unsure because uh, it's pretty much beginner friendly. And then uh, if you're ready to move on from the third one, go with the fourth one. And then once you're feeling like you're really good and just like want more firepower, go with the second one. I don't go with the second one first because you need a, a lot of ammunition to support that extra weapon, you know. And as you can see, like I'm barely right there. So I don't, I don't even have a munitions depot. So I don't really recommend going with the second one right off the bat. I know there are people that are really good at managing your resources when they're on yellow. I am not one of those people. But, yeah. I think that will be the end of this episode. Pretty so pretty solid game right now. Uh, I think I got a good setup going. As you can see, our campaign progress is 7%. We're done with the tutorial. That was the end of the tutorial. Now this is where the game really begins. And this is where the difficulty goes from 0 to 100 in like no time. So, uh... Got a couple things I gotta say before I end this video. So, as always, I'm still working on Hitman. Working on Fire Emblem. I'm in the middle of that playthrough, so pretty good. All's going good. Hitman's a little slow, though, because a lot of stuff to do there. Not easy to render. Y you know how it is. But, uh, um, just got started with this playthrough. Playthrough's pretty good so far. No issues. I don't know how I'm going to structure the episodes. I don't know if they're all going to be... I don't know, I see, I don't know if I should make them all one hour long videos like this, but, or if I should just, like, make them, like, uh, do three levels every, every video, you know? I don't know if I want to do it that way. You guys will have to let me know there. How you guys like the layout. Either one hour or three, three levels per episode. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like this series, and I am working, I'm almost done. I, I am very excited to say that I, I'm almost done with my project I was working on. For my 100 video special. It's a project I've been working on for a good two months now. It took me a lot of progress. Had a couple setbacks. But I am almost done. I think it. I, hopefully I can show it by next week. After New Year's. Like I really want to show it off. because I did, But I can't show it off right now. Because it's not quite done yet. And I want to make it sure it's, it's pretty good. So hopefully you guys uh, look forward to that. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of Redcon. I'm looking forward to making more videos about this one. Like uh, just a really solid game overall. I like it. It's difficult but fair. There are times though when it just like kind of ramps up even more to ridiculous levels. But I enjoy this game. Very fun. Give it a try if you haven't. If you enjoy kind of like hardish games, get, give it a try. Watch my guide if you really need help. But uh, overall, or if you're just like looking for like uh something to do, or if you just like need some background noise for your daily work, hopefully you guys enjoy this series. But with that out of the way, uh. That's going to be it for today, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.